Python is a language which emphasizes its readability. It encourages you to spread code across multiple lines and use white space to keep things clean. That's why today I'm challenging myself to write a game in less than 50 lines of Python code whilst keeping it readable to show you how to make something fun and functional in just a few lines. In the spirit of Python, we are going to be making a snake game. I wanted a retro arcade feel, so I went with the Curses library, which lets you create applications in your terminal. In this video, we are going to code this snake game together in less than 50 lines, so let's dive right in. Start by importing the Curses library. Because we are creating a terminal game, in our code we want to muck with some terminal settings like not echoing keys to the screen so our snake doesn't poop out a character every time we press a key. But this means if the game crashes we won't get those settings restored. So a clean thing to do in a curses program is to pass your main function into curses.wrapper which will restore your terminal settings if it encounters an exception. This main function is then passed to the scroll, which is an object representing your screen. At the moment it does absolutely nothing. Let's fix that by putting in a while true loop so the game runs until we control C out of there. In the while true, let's also get the user's key presses with get ch. We can print out what keys we press to make sure everything is working. And yes, yeah, printing out the ASCII codes for W, A, S and D looks good. We are going to want to actually display a snake since it's a snake game. I'm going to store the positions of the pieces of the body in a list called segments. Let's start him in the top left corner, as in the first segment of this snake is the coordinate 1, 1. And the idea is that we will add a segment to this list each time the snake eats a food and gets longer, in the form of a coordinate to keep track of where his body is. And draw him to the screen with add ch, which expects a position and a character. The character I'm using for his body is this cool checkerboard character. He doesn't really move though, so let's fix that. To simulate movement, a naive way would be to loop through every segment in the segments list from tail to head and update all these segment pieces to be the position of the segment in front of it, and for the last segment, the head, nudge it in the direction of the snake's motion, then redraw the snake on the screen. But this is expensive and inefficient. Instead, notice that after one step, or sliver I guess, this grey section is identical between both snakes. So all we actually need to do to move the snake one step is pop the tail off and add the new head on in the direction of motion. So actually the tail and the head are the only two segments we need to consider in each step. Let's map W, A, S and D to the corresponding direction. Ord gets an ASCII code of the character because getch returns the ASCII code of the key you pressed. I represent directions as the unit vector. For example, the character D is to the right, so it's a step 1 in the x direction. Curses writes all their coordinates in Y, X form rather than X, Y. They mention in the docs that it's too late to change it now, which is so relatable. Just remember that up in the Y direction is a step of negative 1 because Y coordinates decrease as you move up the screen, or increase as you move down the screen. Depends on your point of view. I'm going to start our snake off moving to the right. Direction will store our current direction. Now when the user presses a key, we can change the direction to match the key they pressed. We move the snake by first placing a new head on our snake. The coordinates of the new head are found by adding on the direction vector to the current head, i.e. the first element of our segments list. And insert this new head at the front of the segments list, and then draw in the head with add ch. Note that add ch expects coordinates for the position of the character on the screen, and then the character itself. This star syntax is a shorter way of writing the yx coordinates fully by just unpacking the list. We then remove the tail which is the last element of the segments list, so pop it off. To remove the tail from the screen, I actually replace the tail character with a space to remove it. Okay, it moves in the direction we tell it to, but we need to keep pressing a button, it doesn't move on its own. This is because getch actually waits for a character input, so none of this other code of adding a head and popping the tail will happen until we input a character, and then it loops and waits for another character, so it is only ever doing one step at a time. To fix this, we can use timeout. Timeout 75 means we wait 75 milliseconds for the user input of a character before proceeding with the rest of the movement code. If the user does not enter a character in this time, getch just returns negative one and moves on with its life. We also need to only change the direction if the user pressed a valid key, as in getch did not return negative one. Now the snake moves on its own, and clicking W, A, S, and D changes his direction. Unfortunately, the snake is allowed to just wander off my screen and crash the game. Let's make sure he cannot leave. Firstly, let's draw a nice border in. Then we can get the screen height and width with get max yx. The game should end if the snake crosses this width for height, as in the y coordinate of the snake hits 0 or height minus 1, or the x coordinate hits 0 or width minus 1. If we're going to put the snake in an enclosure like that, it's only fair to give these guys something to eat. 
Food should be randomly generated on the map, so we need to import random and save this position in food pause. Randomly generate the y coordinate between 1 and height minus 2 and the x coordinate between 1 and width minus 2 to account for the border. Now you can see a piece of food is randomly generated, but nothing happens when he eats it, which is like zero calorie food. When the snake eats food, he should grow. So how to do this? Well, each time the snake moves a step, we pop the tail and add a new head. So how about we only pop the tail when he is not eating food, as in the coordinates of the head is not equal to the coordinates of the food. That way, when he eats food, the new head is added, but the tail is not removed and it gives the appearance of growth. Now there is food and he grows when he noms it. But now he's hungry again. We need to generate new food when he eats. So if his head does collide with the food, copy these two lines from above to generate some new food and put it in a different random location. Now he's at an unlimited buffet. We also want to keep track of your score, which should increment whenever he eats food. We add the score to the screen with add str or add string. Add string expects the y and x coordinates. Let's just put the score counter on the border to avoid the snake colliding with it followed by the string to put on the screen, which is the score in this case. And of course, increment the score when he eats a food. As you can see, I am very good at this game. Okay, he's literally circling the food, you're meant to eat it. Let's clean up the code a little bit and do the final touches. So in a snake game, you don't just lose after hitting the border, but you also aren't allowed to collide with yourself. So let's end the game if the head of the snake hits one of its segments. Another thing is he can change directions on himself in this crazy way. You should not be allowed to move from one direction to the opposite direction, say left directly to right or up directly to down, so let's catch that. So if the two directions are opposites, their unit vectors will add to the zero vector, zero, zero. So let's not change direction if that's the case. Finally, the food should not generate anywhere on the snake's body because he needs to sliver towards it. So while the food generates in the same location as one of the segments, let's regenerate a new position instead. Lastly, this is being a little bit fussy, but I didn't really like the way that this add string is being called on every iteration of the while loop. I think it's much cleaner to only call add string when the score changes, as in you're only doing it when you need it. So let's only add the string to the screen initially when the score is zero and whenever we increment the score. The terminal cursor also follows the snake around, which is a little bit annoying, so we can hide it with curses, curse set, zero. And there we have it, a fully functioning snake game. And in less than 50 lines. I'll put a link to this code in the description. See you next time.